first I'd like to start off by saying that the Republican Jewish Board is a membership of over 30,000 people across the United States with 45 chapters, including the Great Plains chapter, which incorporates Iowa, South Dakota, and Nebraska. We started the group a little over a year ago, and now our membership has grown to over 100 people, including policymakers and business leaders throughout our area. Senator Grassley's been a great friend of Israel. He's been a good conservative in Washington that we can rely on for Iowa's needs and also for a better United States. So would you please welcome Senator Grassley. a chance to sit down and eat and, uh, and then uh, have the program, but I came to the conclusion that if I started to eat, there wouldn't be much time for what you might be interested in. Uh, I, I've got a few words to say, but I want to tell you that I want you folks to set the agenda because I think there's such a large turnout here, much larger than I have at most political events in Iowa. I will visit about Israel, and I'll visit about our domestic economic uh, policy. Uh, in regard to uh, Americans for Israel, people of any religious faith for Israel, I see it as something very much in the national security interest of the United States from two standpoints. One, we have we have a goal of making sure that we promote values around the world. Do we do a good job of it? I suppose sometimes we do, sometimes maybe we don't. But we have a goal of promoting American values around the world. And it seems to me that Israel shares those values with us. So the extent to which we have mutual values working together is going to accomplish more. One of those values, or maybe another point, would be promoting democracy. And Israel is the only democracy. We hope we have another democracy coming in the, uh, in the uh, arena uh, of Iraq when it matures, and hopefully they're in the process of doing that. But outside of that, the only democracy is Israel. So if we want to promote democracy, we ought to have friendly relations with Israel. But our national security is one of the main reasons for a good working relationship with Israel because national security is the number one responsibility of the federal government. And wherever we can get help around the world, we ought to get that help. And from the standpoint of uh, from the standpoint of uh, national security in the United States, what goes on the, in, in the Middle East and is uh, part of our economic as well as our national security is our dependence upon oil. Should we have that sort of dependence? I hope we can wean ourselves away from that sort of dependence. But it's very much a concern of ours to make sure that we have friends within that nation and, and friends we can operate with to protect our national security and economic issues as well. Uh, and, and, uh, and Israel is that sort of a, of a, of a friend. Uh, from the standpoint of those of us that claim Christ as our Savior, we have a responsibility through the scriptures to honor, to honor Israel countries that honor Israel, people that honor Israel, will likewise be honored as well. Uh, when it comes to one of the main things that Israel is entitled to and wants, because Israel exists, why? Because the United Nations the Declaration, May 1948, recognized Israel and made decisions beneficial to Israel, and I think beneficial to the rest of the world at a time when we should have all been embarrassed of what happened before, during uh, World War II. And uh, in a homeland specified biblically, it's very, very important, but also the, the constitutional 
or I should say legal existence of Israel is based upon that. And, and just a few days later, Harry Truman recognizes Israel. So we don't have to worry about the legal status of the country of Israel, even though people are always questioning that legal status. What we have to be concerned is making sure that that legal status is preserved because uh, it would, would, without the support of the United States and, uh, and a few other friendly nations around the world, there's a lot of people that would like to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. From that standpoint, the threatening of Israel almost every day is something that we all have to take into consideration. People that say that the United States ought to push Israel to make peace. Peace is based upon trust. So that's going to be the trust between Israel and neighbors. It's not sentimental. It works. For 30 years between Israel and Egypt. For 15 or more years between Israel and Jordan. And I think they're being invited to the peace conference in September going on in, 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 uh, going on in Washington between Israel and the Palestinians it is very symbolic. If it can work once, it can work again, build upon that trust. Israel will sacrifice for peace, but they want to make sure that it's a long-lasting peace and that borders are secure. Those things will have to be negotiated. And we should be supportive of that negotiation, but we should not be in a position of pushing one country into something that, it, that, that doesn't have a peace based upon trust. I'll follow up with any questions or observations or even disagreement with anything I've said to this point in history.